The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 772 Power Plan Woes An unending shower of rain tumbled through the hole that made up Grand Bell, the weather refusing to change even as the afternoon passed and the evening advanced and the storm clouds above started to darken from the lowering sun. But Starlight wasn't around to see it. Valet and Shinespark had returned, their acquaintances from the tournament organization in tow, and now they were deep within the city, the better half of the Immortal Dreams crew seated with their friends in a dimly lit room, as a stage was prepared at the far end. This is an interesting venue, Shinespark commented, seated on a long wooden bench that was comfortably curved and contoured. I'm guessing this was converted to a theater and not built as one initially? You would guess correctly, Pierre replied, seated next to Randorf and watching as the room slowly filled. Grand Bell is too large for a single house of culture, and the troop we are friends with are not the most wealthy or established in the world. They travel too much to own claim to a permanent venue. So, remind me what we're watching again? Valet scratched her head, looking slightly less bothered by her wounds than the day before. A dramatization of the last few years of the tournament, Saffron Sunflower replied, putting her hind legs up on the bench in front of him. Figured if you all are weary of being the entertainment for other folks, what with being in the tournament spotlight and all, might as well see what it feels on the other side. Let the stories of some past champions entertain you. A stallion, who looked to be carefully hiding the signs of age, stepped onto the stage, checked the pocket watch, and surveyed the crowd. Ten minutes until showtime, he announced, sporting a prim layered suit and a cravat. Everyone should find their places and enjoy the show. That's Nimble Step, Shill Stage whispered. He runs the troupe. Randorf works there when it's not tournament season. I'm out of this production to focus on my fighting, Randorf said, lowering his voice to an outdoor level. Saffron elbowed him. Yep, wouldn't hurt to become the next champion and get into play yourself some year, would it? Excuse me, a voice said next to Starlight as the lights began to dim. She looked up, seeing a teal unicorn mare pointing to some empty space between her and the aisle. Is this taken? And would there be room for two? Maple glanced over Starlight's shoulder, the mare regarding them with a coat slung across her back and a friendly smile. I don't think so. I wouldn't mind. Starlight, we can trade if you want. The mare's smile slowly fell away into a look of surprise and recognition, her jaw dropping in the dim light. Wait, you're the ones from Iron Ridge. Indeed we are, Gerardo said, leaning back from the bench a row ahead. Heavy cross paths? Shy spark! The mare's face brightened again, her horn lighting for illumination. I haven't seen you for months! It's me, Bright Coil! Don't you remember? Shy spark leaned over as well, her own eyes widening slightly in remembrance. From Sosa! You know each other? Maple asked, beaming from their tones. Shy spark nodded to everyone. None of you would have been here to remember, but Bright Coil was the one who helped us get a better manicure for the ship while we were out of fuel, when we had just arrived. You all had flown on to Isvaldi with Wallace. Bright Coil nodded brightly, and Schleinsberg glanced up at her. You had a partner. Was it... Sharpie? Are you two still together? We are. Bright Coil blushed slightly, though it could have been a trick of her horn's light. I was trying to get seats for us. Looks like we're in good company, aren't we? Gerardo perked up. Shoppy? Not a great Pegasus inspector from the Sky District who helped me sniffing out those bombs Herman had planted on the dams? The greyest of the grey, Bright Coil giggled. That's us. It was a horrible and stressful job for her that she only stayed at because of the money, and after seeing that dam, we decided to cut ties with the city and leave. We were actually on the last passenger ship east before the Skyport went down, we learned. And now, we have a happy life here. It's good to see you again. Same to you! Valet grinned, waving lazily with a wing. Always go cool running into ponies who are friendly instead of headhunters or jerks. So, yeah, you want to join us? Bright Coil set her and Sharpie's coats to claim their seats, stretched, and sat down. Thanks. 
So your lives here have been better, shines by cast, turned in her seat to face her fellow unicorn. That's a relief to hear. I don't often get news on how former citizens are getting on with their new lives. We're good, Bright Coil assured, nodding happily. Both of us got new jobs working for Meltdown's power distribution agency. I never thought we could be together in the same business, but it turned out perfect for our skill sets, and Meltdown was eager enough to get her hooves on Iron Ridge expatriate know-how that she gave us a very generous signing bonus. That was your airship core, actually. <laughs> but we don't regret it. Really? Shinesbuck raised an interested eyebrow. You got a mana core as a signing bonus? Mm, Valet shrugged. I mean, it is a power company. Giving out power equipment as payment? It's really cheesy, but it makes sense. Brightcoin nodded. The power distribution agency has a monopoly in technology like this in the Griffin Empire, so it didn't cost her as much as it would have elsewhere. And we asked for it for you. We ran into you before, when you had first arrived, if you remember. Hmm. Shinespark nodded, thinking. Brightcoil's smile returned. Anyway, I'm now a switching technician. The Empire's power grid uses centralized production in Granbel, but due to the varying demands of each city and area and the way the lows change with time, balancing the infrastructure so no places get drained or overloaded requires a lot of hardware that's challenging and expensive to maintain. And Sharpie's a quality control inspector as always. That means instead of being the one who tells the higher-ups things aren't fine and then getting stressed when they don't listen, she's the one who tells them there are no problems on her end and they have to blame their problems on something else. What about my job? Another mayor's voice asked, the silhouette of a pegasus with a suit collar and short necktie joining Brightcoil. Oh, hi Sharpie! Brightcoil's horn grew brighter. I ran into Shinespark again. Sharpie leaned in, making brief eye contact with Gerardo. Ah, it's you all. Hello again. Aha, Gerardo chuckled, offering a talon. Your name rang a bell, but the appearance really seals it in my mind. I do know you. Yes, we've met before. Sharpie shook with a wing, then settled into her seat, letting out a long breath. Don't let me interrupt your catching up. We're here to relax, after all. Bright Coil shook her head. Oh, I was just talking about our new jobs. I'm sure you could tell much more about what yours is than I could. <laughs> Sharpie's ears folded. You just like listening to the sound of my voice. <laughs> Bright Coil sheepishly grinned. Guilty as charged. What was that you were saying about blaming problems on someone else, though? Gerardo asked. The power agency is having issues, or do you mean routine things? Sharpie shrugged. Issues are always routine. In the Isvaldi incident a month ago, that bad pony did something to the power grid, and the continent has been facing increasing power shortages ever since. As long as I'm not pointing out problems that are being ignored like I was in Iron Ridge, I'm happy. Valet narrowed her eyes. Wait a second. I heard from a shady but maybe reliable source that Gazelle was making that up as an excuse to keep power expensive and the lights off for that stuff that just happened in Stormhoof. But now that all that's over, he's still doing it? Is he planning something else that requires keeping the lights off? Sharpie frowned. This comes from Meltdown. I don't know why there are shortages, but as long as it's not under the parts I have a 40 to watch, I can in good conscience tell her everything is clear. And did you say they're getting worse? Gerardo tilted his head. Valet, are you certain? What reason would there be for that? Hey! If someone tells me Gazelle is being shifty, I'm gonna believe it. Valet shrugged. If he wants to be less blameworthy, he can try it sometime. Sharpie shook her head and looked at the stage. Not my job. They are getting worse, and I suspect Meldon already knows why, because she doesn't even press me for accuracy when I make my reports, and I know she's getting a lot of pressure from the rest of the nation. As long as you're happy, Brightcoil insisted. And it's not like your job in Iron Ridge. No, it's different, Sharpie softly insisted. Here, I can do my job. There, I spent months compiling a report on the Defense Force's wasteful weapons contract, and it got ignored. As long as I can do what I'm paid to, and my management is not incompetent, malignant, or evil, everything is perfectly fine. She stretched, fluttering her wingtips, and put a wing around Brightcoil's back. No, it's still important to make use of our vacation days. As the duo cuddle up, 
Everyone on the front row turned back to the stage and Valet mused. Nimble step returned to the curtain. Mares and gentle griffins, griffinesses and coots, the production will now begin. Please dim your horns and enjoy the show. End of chapter 772